Hey guys, Jake from Full Access UTV. Today you are looking at a table of junk and some good stuff. Uh, today I want to talk to you about one of the last videos we did. Um, basically my background and why I'm picking a KRX to do King of the Hammers with. Um, like I mentioned, Sand Hollow, I didn't get to drive a KRX. I got to look at the parts. I got to witness them in front of me. Um, so I thought it'd be really cool to show why I'm going to back up my thoughts with this car we're building and pretty much uh, show you why, show you what I saw. And I don't think I've seen a video like this, so this is a great comparison video. Today I've got a ton of stuff from a Polaris uh, Turbo, Turbo S, and a KRX. So these items are going to be um, what we're going to show you to show you the difference. You know, everybody knows, like, you usually it's like a Harley with a UTV. You buy it, you got to upgrade it. Tires, rims, you go bigger, you need bigger shafts, you need all these things. You need gearing, you need clutching. Um, it's like a nonstop thing, and you can easily spend, you know, $10,000, 15000 In my case, with my Polaris General, it was a lot more. I put a um, ton of money in that to do basically what this could do right out of the box with what Kawasaki made. That's huge. That's why I want to showcase the parts. So... I guess enough talking about it. I'll uh, start right here and I'll start showing you some parts. So this is the first one. And on top, we got a KRX 1000. This is a brake rotor. And below it is a XP 1000 turbo brake rotor. So I don't know if you'll be able to tell too much in the video, but this is probably a good 5 eighths, 3 quarters of an inch larger diameter rotor than the Polaris. Um, solid backing plate, but one thing to note here is on the Polaris's, they are notorious for snapping this section right off of the, uh, right into the wheel bearing on the wheel hub. So this part breaks off. Kawasaki changed that design. There sits up flush against a big thick washer. Um, it's just a better design so you don't have that failure point here. So that's the rotor. Let me move those. Lots of good stuff. What am I going to show you next? Okay. Let's talk about knuckles. That is a knuckle from an XP1000 Turbo Polaris. This is the same side knuckle from an, a KRX1000. It doesn't take much to see the difference. This thing is huge. This thing is beefy. Um, it's just made a lot better and it's made to withstand and hold up to 35 inch tires right out of the box and uh, That way you can abuse it as you know Kawasaki will warranty a 35 no problem. No questions asked uh, Unfortunately with a Polaris or a Can-Am you, you go up one tire size It's a reason that for them to get out of the warranty and it's crazy So on these knuckles too, a lot of the racers. They're not even running these they're running custom um, uh, full built knuckles that are double shear because these arms will break off. I'm sure everybody knows, and a lot of people here, the player says the wheel bearings don't last. Um, look at the Kawasaki. Look at the size of the wheel bearing. The wheel bearing is a much bigger diameter. It's much thicker. If you look at the steering arm thickness between the two, it's a much beefier arm. So, with that said too, I guess the other thing today is look at the ball joints. I got a ball joint over here. This KRX 1000 lower ball joint, which is the smaller of the two. That is a Polaris. It, it's, that's a big difference, you know, if you compare edge to edge. This is really small and pretty puny. Um, anybody with a Polaris Snows or even a Can-Am, you guys know, a uh, good set of quality ball joints is $300 plus for some good stuff. So um, you, do, you don't have to mess with them with a Kawasaki. I guess that's the point. Also in the Kawasaki, they had a known knuckle problem and Kawasaki being who they did, came out and fixed the problem. It, that blows me away that they took care of every single car out there. And just so you know, if you own a 2020 uh, Kawasaki KRX and you look and it has the old style knuckle that looks just like this, they'll take care of it for you. They will replace your knuckles and your lower A-arms. So this is exactly what the old style looks like. If you see this like rusted out pattern that's around the ball joint, um, that's what the old style looked like. New are, I don't have any for display, but it's a big change. The issue was this point and this point are, were made to be a steering stop. And what happened is at full compression at turn, these steering stops would hit the A-arms and then basically it would crack this right here and put a split in it. So it, again, kind of amazing to me that they went through and did all that. 
Um, steering stops are done a lot of different ways on a lot of different cars, but still they did it the same way, but they actually replaced the lower arms too, which is, which is huge. So even if your arm was bent, they're replacing it, they're fixing it. So that's pretty stand up, but that's just one reason why I like the KRX. So I'll move these. Since we're talking arms, that's an arm from a XP 1000 turbo. This is the same arm from a KRX 1000. You can see the difference. It's huge. Um, as we mentioned, the ball joint's a lot bigger. Design is different. The ball joint stays in the knuckle, but the diameter of the tubing is much better. You pick this up, you can feel the weight, and this thing is just hollow. I mean, if you can see how thin these things are, there's nothing to them. That's why we even have it. Uh, this took a slight hit and this was bent. He also had bent a tie rod. So we ended up upgrading to some super ATB arms for him and uh, it made it a lot better. But look at the size of this thing. These things are made to be beefy. You also notice there's a bunch of ground clearance built underneath. They made them a little, it's not to say high clearance, but it's higher clearance than a Polaris or a Can-Am is. Um, and then bushings. Bushings, you don't hear anybody talk about bushings in a KRX. They don't have bushing problems. And that's why, look at the size. And matter of fact, as a funny little joke, you can actually slide this Polaris arm into it. And it still has some slop in there too. So these things don't have those issues that you see in the Polaris's and Can-Ams and, uh, and they're beefy. So it's one more thing you don't have to upgrade and pull out your wallet to do. And that's, that's an impressive thing to me. Another thing I should say too is I don't have any Can-Am parts here. Can-Am and Polaris are real similar. There's not a lot there. Those two have been chasing each other for a long time with small parts, very small parts. And nothing is, is a huge upgrade like the Kawasaki. There's nothing out there that's like this. So that's why I was impressed and I think it's worth mentioning. You're not going to see any Kawasaki parts here because what we got is Turbo S parts. That's the biggest, baddest um, Polaris they got. That's the best parts they got. So that's what we're showing you today. I'm gonna move those. Someone's texting away at me. Hear the UPS driver pulling up. Okay, tie rods. So again, here's an XP, here's a Kawasaki KRX 1000. Look at the size difference. Everything about these says you don't need to upgrade. Now, in racing purposes, some guys are upgrading these. Um, they still can bend here at this neck down part, but it's nothing like this. And this is your notorious hit point. This is where they always bend in the, um, in the Polaris's. So look at the size of this tie rod end. You look at the difference between the two, just the thickness of everything and that joint. Matter of fact, that's a Polaris ball joint. It's technically bigger than the Polaris ball joint, if that tells you anything. And that's just a steering tie rod. Matter of fact, on the other end, I've got these saved. So this is a spare I'll bring to the races and everything. But look at the size of the ball difference. This is what connects to your steering rack. And if you can see that through that bag, it is much, much bigger than the Polaris one. So another reason you're not upgrading. You also notice too, you can see all the cuts on here where we had to grab it with channels to get it out. You notice the Kawasaki was thinking ahead. This one's got the cut grooves, so you can put a wrench on it pull it out of there. Pull that. Okay. How about rear radius rods? Radius rods are notoriously junk on a Can-Am and a Polaris. Everybody knows that. Um, I think it, pretty much anybody who's doing anything with them on either rig upgrades them. It's a ton of money. So today, this one on the table, this is actually a Turbo S. This is the biggest one that they make. And this is the biggest one that was on the kit of the car that we pulled this off of. Um, it's still smaller than the Kawasaki. So that's the biggest thing they got. And if you look at the diameter of the tubing, this is stronger. It's got some bends to have some more clearance to it. And you can tell this is a lower because it's sandblasted from the front tire, but joints are similar in size. They both run the same size bolts, but just one more reason, just better. Um, I have seen these bend, you know, so even on the Kawasaki, um, people are bending them, but that's because people are running 35s and 37 inch tires. So, hey, things are going to bend, things are going to move, but uh, that's a huge thing for most people that they don't even have to mess with this. Hmm. 
Here's one. I'm gonna bring this over there. That's probably a good cut point. That is a Turbo S front CB shaft. So again, Turbo S, biggest, strongest, fastest thing they got. Almost 200 horsepower car. Um, that's the best CB they got. And at the end of the day, that is a Kawasaki KRX 1000. I'm looking at the camera guy who's laughing because that's actually pretty funny. Look at the size difference. Look at the shaft diameter. The splines are larger on the inside. The size of this bell from one to the other is ridiculous. You're not breaking this cage. You're not doing that. These splines, you have a bigger spline count than the Turbo S does. I mean, shaft diameter is bigger, boots are bigger. Look at the, look at the, uh, the outside. I mean, that's a man versus a boy right there, guys. That's a huge difference. So nobody's breaking these. Even in like hardcore situations, I haven't heard of anyone who's actually broken one of these yet. And I'm sure there's probably some stories that'll come, but hey man, look at that. You're not upgrading these. And if you want to take your Turbo S and you want to do an upgrade on this thing, the minimum to put an upgrade in is like uh, Rhino 2.0 axles from Super ATV. You're 270 bucks a piece times four. So that's just to upgrade and you're still not going to have the strength of that. So next step up, RCV, you know, $3,000 in shaft. So again, Kawasaki KRX, that's why I'm doing it. On our car, we're going to do even bigger, better upgrades than these. We're going to make sure we never break it, no matter how dumb I drive. So that's kind of the point there. All right. Since we're talking about front CV shafts, let's talk about diffs. Now that's front diff, and that is the best thing that Kawasaki offers, excuse me, Polaris offers. That diff is from a Turbo S and an RS1. This is from a Kawasaki KRX 1000. Again, why it's laughing, because it actually is pretty funny. Um, you guys can even verify, if you want to, the serial number on this and look it up, or the model number. This is the best they got. And you'll notice with the best they got, it's broken. This is what happens. They're still not big enough. Strength is in ring gear. I learned that through rock crawling and racing through all the years. I mean, we went from, you know, four nines in racing to, to tens, and now there's ten and a halfs and things like that. Ring gear is where the strength is. It's not going to break. Changes pinion size, pinion shafts, and things like that. Like this one doesn't break. But it's a huge difference if you look at the diameter of the ring gears. You know, the overall size of it, everything about this is just ridiculously beefy. And... That's because they didn't want it to break. They want you to go out and have a good time, put big tires on it, and do things you can't do in a UTV. They're definitely making their own class here. And um, I don't think a lot of people realize that. So putting the parts on the table, even like Wyatt, who's filming, was shocked and was like, wow, I didn't even know. And so if you own a Polaris, an Ace, an RZR, anything, you always want to upgrade. This is what you're going and spending like 1300 bucks to get and put in, and it's a ton of fab work to put this in, but it's still nowhere near the size or strength of this. So today I've heard of nobody breaking these. I know the input is uh, actually machined right here where the bearing goes in and it has a weak point designed in by Kawasaki, which is a brilliant idea, that the final shear point is it will shear it off right here before you ever break a front diff. So now like Turner's out there and we're gonna come out with an upgrade too for here so you make it a little stronger, put a little more stress forward, but. Uh, it's a huge difference, you know, and it, again, the guys who are even needing that are beating these things. So, and then beating them. I say most of the damage is coming from the East Coast guys and they're jumping, landing on throttle, things like that. And that's what you read about. But again, that's why I'm going KRX. I need that front diff in my car. This thing's a brick. Which I guess leads to, hey, why? Do people talk crap about the KRX, the strength? They're like, oh man, it's just a boat, it's slow. Hey, you're right. But by the time you upgrade your Polaris, your Can-Am, to be able to do what that car does, A, you're broke, and B, it, it's gonna be real similar in weight. But you still won't be able to get it as strong. Okay, this clutch, this Polaris, uh, this is a Polaris uh, RZR1000. Same thing as the turbo clutch, but not the turbo S clutch, but that's what this one is. Um, and then Kawasaki KRX 1000. If you look at the difference, 
it doesn't take a rock scientist to see, wow, um, that's an insanely big difference. And uh, it's, it, it's what you need, especially if you're going to run in bigger tires. Um, Polaris's, Can-Ams, they're known for burning up belts. They're known for eating belts, throwing out belts. You don't hear about anybody with a Kawasaki doing that. And there's a few different reasons, and I'll, sh and I'll kind of show it to you. But um, it's a... Uh, oops. Anyway, so it's, it's a big difference. Um, if you look at, I mean, just the size, think about a bicycle sprocket. You are, you have a front sprocket that's usually big and a back one that's usually small. That's what these are doing. So they're going, the belt's coming all the way in here when you're in low and you're trying to crawl. And then on the secondary, they're way up at the top and on the end. Matter of fact, speaking of secondary, That is the massive secondary clutch of a KRX 1000. So I don't have a Polaris one here to show you, but they are smaller diameter than this. But um, basically the way the belt moves through is it's using this large diameter in low and the belt's all the way inside in the front. And that's where you're getting your gear reduction from. Kawasaki being who they are too, also knew they were gonna limit the top speed of this car and they did it right here. They did all the math, all the gearing in this car is right but they're limiting it how fast you can go because they don't want people out killing themselves, um, which is respectable, but the aftermarket's here and we are changing things in these and we're changing sheaves and cuts and things like that. We're getting more low. We're also getting higher and higher speeds. So right now the KRX is naturally aspirated with no motor, no internal motor work are doing over 80 miles an hour. So it's all in clutching and this and that. One other huge thing about pointing out about the the other UTVs is Polaris and Can-Ams, your belt is going to be stuck here in the secondary. It's a business day if you can't tell. So your belt will be stuck here in the secondary and it'll just be sitting here floating in the center here. So this thing's going to sit here and spin and your belt will not move. And as you can tell, it's going to burn spots. It's rubber versus metal. And it just sits there. So when you start up your car and it's idling, this is what's going on. And this is burning up your belt. So every time you start driving away, this clamps. And when the clamping force happens, again, it's trying to burn and slip on your belt. That's what the issue is. Whether you're on and off gas at 50 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour, or just leaving your driveway, that's what's happened. All that slip and, and friction's happening. That's why you're blowing up belts, wasting belts, so on and so forth. Kawasaki. The belt rides in here and is locked in here. The belt does not move from here to here. It's completely locked in because Kawasaki has, and I should have brought one up for a, a demonstration, but Kawasaki has um, what's known as a wet clutch. The wet clutch is hidden here behind this and behind the aluminum housing at the engine crank. There's a wet clutch. That wet clutch is what spins. So when the motor's idling and stuff, that thing's just spinning and this is staying still. So completely opposite of any other car, and that's why it's so much better. But that wet clutch, as the RPMs increase, it expands out, grabs, and starts turning this. But again, it doesn't spin that belt. That belt is just locked in between the two and changes from high to low and high to low. So um, matter of fact, I think I'll do a little edit. I'm going to put in a video of, uh, we got an RZR 1000 four-seater here. I'll put an edit in there of that one idling, and I'll do one of a Kawasaki idling. So there may not be any sound on it, but they're both running. Um, I think that's it. If that, that it's got to be impressive, right? Look at the size difference of this stuff. You're wondering which car to buy, Kawasaki. I mean, people say they're slow, and the aftermarket's figuring it out. We got tunes right now. We're doing over 80 miles an hour, and we're not doing any internal motor work. Um, uh, it's only going to get better and better. But at the end of the day, you're not spending, or taking out your wallet, throwing it down the toilet, upgrading these things. So. Yeah, the Kawasaki needs some upgrades. We offer upgrades. There's gonna be more to come, especially if you're gonna abuse it like me or a bunch of other guys that are out there doing this, but um, you can't beat it. So again, Jake from Full Access UTV, that's why I'm building that car right there. That's why I'm sold on this car. And uh, thanks again for watching. Hey, and we're gonna edit this in here because I was just thinking the wet clutch is super important. I wanted to talk about it. We carry them in stock. So brought one out, just open it up and explain what this is. 
Again, this is the part that's hidden behind your clutch you don't see, but it's like that. This is your wet clutch. This is what Kawasaki developed, and it's pretty much like a brake shoe type material, and it's, it's wet because this thing actually sits in your motor oil and spins. The motor oil is what keeps it cool and everything else, but when you, uh, when you get on the gas, these weights just rotate out. So they're controlled by RPM and they'll blow out, and this is what starts grabbing. So this is why you don't burn up belts and everything else, and I thought it'd be a really good idea to show that. Um, and again, you know, this is a big chunk of steel, and it, it adds up, all the weights there, you know, people say these things are, are slow and everything else, but it's like, hey, we got some sayings, we got some shirts. And one of them is, yeah, you may be able to do it twice, but we can do it all night long. And that's because look at the size, right? That's awesome. Hey, what about this one? That's right. We can do anything. These cars are made for that. We give them some speed, they're going to handle it. But again, we'll cut back. Like and subscribe, please uh, enjoy the content and I'll get those other videos to throw in here. So thanks for watching.